What's up world, Matt here, and today I want to practice talking about actions. But I don't want to practice talking about actions in a really basic and simple way. Instead, I want to practice talking about a actions in a very specific and descriptive way. I want us to think about how we can describe actions using adverbs. Let's try it out. I'm going to show you some sentences and see what your instincts are telling you about how to complete these sentences. Then we'll look more specifically about at how to use these adverbs to describe actions. So look at this picture right here. She is smiling. What do you think could complete this sentence? She smiles. Yeah, when she is with her pet. She smiles when she is with her pet. That's the location or the condition under which she smiles. Nice. All right, let's look at this second picture. He's also smiling. He smiles. Yeah, because he's presenting. He must be an extroverted person and enjoy the attention he gets from being on stage. He smiles because he's presenting. All right, let's look at one more picture. He's smiling too. He smiles. Yeah, happily. It's a short, simple sentence. That's the quality with which he smiles. He smiles happily. Nice job completing those sentences. Whether you knew it or not, you're already using or adverbs to be specific in talking about actions. Now I want to share something else with you that uses adverbs to communicate information. This is a poem about my mother. My mother listens lovingly. My mother listens when I need a friend. My mother listens through the phone. My mother listens more than anyone else. My mother listens because she loves me. So that is a poem that I wrote about my mother when I was a young kid. So I have a question for you. Looking at my poem, what did you learn about my mom? What information did you learn? So in general, you learned that she's a good listener. Can you be more specific? What did you learn about the way my mother listens? Yeah, we learned lots of different types of information. How, how she listens, when she listens, why she listens, where she listens, and how much she listens. Nice. So these, where did you find out that information? What parts of the poem? Yeah, the words at the end of the lines give us that extra information about how my mother listens. All of these words in red are adverbials. They give us extra information about how my mother does the action of listening. So an adverbial is a word or a phrase that offers information about an action. My mother listens through the phone. My mother and I listen and live in different places. So normally when I'm talking to her, it's through the phone. That's giving you information about the location of our conversation. It's not in a physical location like a living room or a backyard. It's in a digital location through the phone. Right? Um, or you might get other information like when I need a friend, right? That's the time when I, my mother does the listening, right? When I call her, I need my mom to be a friend. So, an adverbial can describe how, when, where, or why an action is done. It gives us that extra information to understand more about what's going on, to see and hear more of the story. And like you see in this poem, the most common place for an adverbial is after the action. It's not the only place, but for today, that's where we're mainly going to be seeing and practicing using adverbs to give more information about some actions. Okay, 
I want to practice looking at this poem a little bit more because I think it's a nice example of these five different types of adverbs. How, when, why, where, and how much. So I'm going to ask you some specific questions and I want you to try and find the information in the poem as fast as you can, okay? Try to use the adverb phrases to help you find the information that you're looking for, okay? So question number one. When does my mom listen? When? Yeah, that's information when. My mom listens when I need a friend. Nice. Question number two. Why does my mom listen? Why? Yeah, the question why connects to the word because. My mom listens because she loves me. Nice. Okay, question number three. How much does my mom listen? How much? This one's a little tricky. The question how much is about quantity, right? It's normally about counting. But when I'm talking about an action like listening, I can't listen five or listen seven. I can't count how much I'm listening. But I can give a description about the quantity of listening. So when I look at this poem, the line that says, my mother listens more than anyone else, that's a comparison, right? That word more is talking about a quantity in a comparative way. So I think that line is where I learn how much that information right there. Okay, question number four, where does my mom listen? Yeah, this was an easy one. We just talked about it. My mother listens through the phone. Right? Not a physical location, but a digital location. Where? Through the phone. Right? That preposition through can connect us to that question of where that's looking for a location. Okay, final question, number five. How does my mother listen? How? Yeah, how is about the quality of an action, right? Kind of think of it like the color of an action if I wanted to be poetic right? What's the energy with which something is done? My mother listens lovingly, right? If I had to give that a color, maybe it's a warm yellow or a, a warm reddish pink, something like that, right? And so that's the quality with which the action is done. Nice job using those adverbs to answer specific questions and find information from our text. Now I want to do some speaking practice using adverbs to describe a picture. So I'll go first and show you what I'm talking about and give you an example with the first picture. Then I'll show you a second picture and give you a chance to practice speaking with some adverbs, sharing some information about how, when, why, where, and how much the action being done is being done. So let's look at this picture first. This is Sarah. Okay, uh, well, what is Sarah doing? S Sarah is smiling. So I'm gonna talk about that action and I'm gonna give maybe five different examples describing more about that action of um, smiling. How is Sarah smiling? When is Sarah smiling? Why is Sarah smiling? Where is she smiling? And how much is she smiling? I'm gonna think about those ideas and share some information about this picture, okay? So Sarah is smiling wildly. Sarah is smiling right after winning a competition. Sarah is smiling because she is the new spelling bee champion. Sarah is smiling more than all the other competitors. Sarah is smiling in the center of the stage. So I just used some adverbs to even tell a little mini story right? About this girl, Sarah, who's won a spelling bee and here she is in the middle of a stage smiling more than all the other competitors. I see the confetti, I see what it is. but Sarah is smiling wildly. So that's me using adverbs to describe this picture and tell a little story. Now yeah. let's try with another picture and you can come up with some adverbials to share some information and maybe even create a little mini story about this character. So here's a picture of Fernanda. What do you see Fernanda doing?
There's a lot of different ways you could describe this. I'm gonna give you a word that maybe you don't know, maybe you do, but I think it fits this situation perfectly. And we can use that word to create as many different adverbials as we can. Let's try and create five, right? So the action word I want you to use is gasps. To gasp is to go, oh! and that's what I see Fernanda doing. I see Fernanda gasping, oh! right? So we can create, try to create five different sentences that begin, Fernanda gasps, oh! and then think about what other information she can share. So first, why don't you come up with a sentence about um, where Fernanda gasps? You can use the background or add some more information on your own. So think about it and try to come up with a sentence now. Where does Fernanda gasp? Fernanda gasps. Nice, that works. I was thinking something like Fernanda gasps on the sidewalk. I see her walking. Okay, so let's try another example. Um, let's go, I think this is an important one to establish early on. Why does, no, actually let's say why for the end. I think that'll be a nice, fun surprise. But in your mind, I want you to think about why Fernanda gasps. But we're gonna save that for the very end. Okay, so Fernanda gasps on the sidewalk. Okay, let's do how much. Let's think about quantity. How could you describe a how much? Fernanda gasps. Nice, nice example. I was thinking that it's a sound and one way we quantify sound is in volume. So I thought Fernanda gasps very loudly. Okay, next up, we've done where and how much. Let's think about when. When does Fernanda gasp? What's the timing on this? Fernanda gasps. Nice. I use that word too. I was thinking Fernanda gasps when she sees something. I like that one because it, it kind of gives some information, but there's also a secret there. It, it creates some surprise coming. So we've done three different adverbials. Let's do two more. Um, so we're gonna do Fernanda gasps how, and then Fernanda gasps why. That'll be our big reveal at the end. So how does Fernanda gasp? Can you think of one word to describe the, the quality with which Fernanda gasps? Yeah, that works. Or you could say something like Fernanda gasps shockingly. <laughs> That's a complete surprise. All right, and last up, why does Fernanda gasp? That's similar to mine. Here's what I was thinking. Fernanda gasps because she sees a giant rat. <gasps> nice. So that was a great work using different adverbials together to describe how an action is being done and create this scene. Right? to find out more about what's going on all around Fernanda, where she is, what's going on, why is, what's the why that's motivating her. Great job practicing with this. For one last activity, I want us to practice using adverbials and writing. We've been looking at a lot, a poem that I wrote about my mom when I was younger. And I think it's a nice way to practice adverbials. I think the repetition of poetry lends itself nicely to practicing some new grammar. So I want you to think about one person who's important to you. It can be an important family member, an important friend, um, a classmate, a teacher, but someone you know personally, right? Not like a celebrity, like this athlete is very, that could, they could be an important inspiration, but I want it to be someone you know personally because you're gonna be describing an action they do. And so I think someone that you know personally is someone that you've seen and heard with your own eyes and ears, and you're gonna be able to describe it more. So do you have one important person in your mind? I'm gonna talk about my father. Um, I've been talking about my mother and that, that's not fair. I love both of my parents, so I wanna make sure my father gets some love in this video too. So 
I'm gonna create a poem about my father. So just like we've been doing about all night, I wanna choose one action that I think is really characteristic of my father. For example, my father is very silly. He likes to make people laugh and he likes to laugh. So the repeated phrase I'm gonna use is, my father laughs. I want you to think about one action that's really quintessential for the person you're thinking about, right? Maybe it's my brother plays or my sister dances. Um, my father builds, or my mother talks, whatever you, you want it to be. And again, it doesn't have to be family. Those are just the ideas that came to my mind. All right, then once you have your person and your action, you're going to think what other information can you share about this person in relation to that one action? How do they do this action? Where, when do they do this action? How much and why? Try to come up with at least five different lines for your poem um, and then get ready to share it with someone. If you're feeling brave, you could maybe share it with that person or if not, you could share it with someone else you know who speaks English and show them what you're learning about adverbials. So I'll share with you my example and then I'll leave you to do some writing and trust that you're gonna do some great practice writing about an inspiring person. So here's my poem, My Father Laughs. My father laughs unstoppably. My father laughs when he is happy, sad, scared, or mad. My father laughs because it is his light. My father laughs everywhere he goes. My father laughs with family, friends, and strangers. My father laughs like he has always been your friend. My father laughs. Well, that's my poem. If you can tell, I think reading it slowly, taking some pauses, and finding some words to emphasize help me read it like a poem. So I encourage you now to take some time to write out at least five different lines to your poem, and then practice reading it out loud. See if you can speak it with a voice that honors this important person and really tells their story through the power of your English. Well, thanks so much for all your attention and all your hard work. It's been really great practicing with you. I wish you luck, and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thanks so much. Take care, world, and bye now.